Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this part of learning game maker language from scratch, we are going to be diving into the IF statement. This is exciting because when we begin learning this, you are going to learn how to branch your code based on data comparisons. So we've talked about comparisons and booleans, and we're going to be using those things now. But up until this point, everything you have written has run in a straight line, from line number one to the end. Uh, there's been no way to vary it, there's no way to change it based on data, and that's what this if is going to be. The way I like to think about this is, if this, then that. So, hope you're following along with me, because I'm actually going to be doing some coding here, and I want you to do the same. If you follow along with coding, you learn it better in my personal experience. So, we're going to start with if, then an open bracket, <clears throat> and we're going to say, my cool rating which I defined right up here. And we're gonna say if my cool rating is greater than or equal to four, we're gonna close the bracket. Then we're gonna do an open curly bracket, which is to the right of the P using the shift key. And we're gonna press enter twice. We're gonna close the bracket. I'm gonna go up and press tab. Now here, if you click right behind the brackets, you can see the space that is it's enclosed both for the parenthetical marks and for the curly braces. So anything inside of these curly braces is going to activate, is going to run, if this statement is true. Which, right now, it is. So we're gonna put a show message, you're totally cool. And I've already put the object in a room, so I'm gonna press F5, and it's going to run it, and now, logically, you should be able to see, my cool rating is greater than or equal to 4, and so this message pops up, just like that, which is perfect. That is what we want. So, that allows us to do things based on the data in our game. So, this is the if statement. Now, there's also a thing called an else. Alright, so we use our curly brackets here as well. We close those. And then this acts as like a catch-all. So this if statement, if it is false, then this code will not run. But this else will catch it. So we could say something like, uh, it's a nice day for whatever reason. Now, if this becomes false, this will run. So if we change this cool rating to a 3, which, let's be honest, I'm way higher than a 3, right? But here, this else statement will now run. Okay? So that is, that is exciting, because this allows you to really start branching your code so it's not all linear. Now there's one more thing to look at, and that is the else if statement. This allows you to do what's called cascading ifs, and you can check several different settings, several different pieces of data against itself, and do them, and do different things with them. So, for instance, <clears throat> if we wanted to display a message just to the coolest members, so if the cool rating is equal to 5, they get a special message. Else if, let's say we want to send a message to the ones that are, like, the least cool, alright? So we'll show a message, you're barely cool. So now we have it for the fives and for the ones. So this will check those things, and then if I, both of these are false, it goes directly to the else. The very last thing to note, though, okay, this part is important. You want to be as specific as possible from the top to the bottom. This else should be as generic as possible, like saying it's a nice day in this context, that's as generic as you can get. Now. If on this first statement, we had something like, if this is less than or equal to five, this is always going to run, because this is checked first. And this else if is actually never going to activate, because any number that we put in here, because it's out of five, is going to be less than or equal to five. So this else if statement will never run. You always want to start it with the most specific as possible. That's very important, okay? 
But this is this is awesome because now you can branch your data, you can compare, you can really start doing things. Just imagine how useful this is. If your player is in a battle, you can check if they have enough health. If the, they're fighting a boss and you want the boss to do something exciting when they get to half health to change up their strategies, this allows you to check it. You can say, if boss's health is less than half, then do something. Any code inside of these brackets will run when the, the check, when the comparison returns true. You can go off, fetch some data from the internet, load a new level, bring a new character into the scene, do anything basically because you are now checking the data in the game. And pretty soon, you'll know how to do even more with that data to manipulate it, to have the player actually input data, to have the characters in your game change the data as they are playing the game. So the if statement is essential for doing anything interesting. And with this, you can see it now. And so this if code would get checked, and then it would continue on. And all the code down here would also run. All right? So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions and explain things more if something didn't exactly make sense, all right? So that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for joining me. As always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. Hey there. Uh, I've got a Patreon, if you didn't know. If you'd like to support me, that would be great. Up on the screen are the people who are pledging enough to get their name in the credits. They are helping fund this YouTube channel, which is awesome. I just want to give a shout out to them and all that they do to help me do this. It's great. If you would like to join, uh, you can click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thank you. Thank you.